So here it is. It's day six. It's Thursday. We've got pretty much everything done. We've got the radiator in. We've got the motor filled with oil. Shift linkage in. Axles in. Downpipe hooked up. And for some reason we cannot get this thing started. But it will not turn over. We're getting spark. We think we're getting fuel, but it just will not fire over. We actually had it kicked over and started at one point earlier today. It was running very roughly, but we found that the distributor keyway was 180 degrees out. Once we corrected that, the motor sounded a whole lot better turning over, but it just will not start. So I'm sure a lot of people out there have had the same problem and I'm praying to God that I can figure this out by the time I have to leave tomorrow and take a break, get some food. I mean, as far as I know, all the wiring, I have quadruple checked all the wiring. And unless something is strangely broken somewhere or something is touching that I, I just didn't see, I cannot figure it out at this point. Be back with you as soon as we can figure it out. So here we are. We have completely rewired this thing again. And we're gonna see if it works this time. I don't know why it wouldn't. We're trying to cross every dot and touch every eye to make sure that this is wired properly. Uh, we still have to, you know, hook it up because somebody's the best at it. Four years later. Seriously, it seems like we're doing something, but nothing's happening. Is that it? Check engine light. There she goes. She goes there with the check engine light. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What? That's all we get is fucking code eight out of this thing. The ECU is good, it runs my car perfectly fine. The distributor's good, it runs my car perfectly fine. When we put my distributor that works from my car onto this engine, it does the same thing. Try to start it one more time. Yeah. Thank God! Now leave it. Turn the heat on. See if it'll go past four. <laughs> it works. Now we gotta hook up the O2 sensor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, the B high, high compression B20s are pretty nasty. All right, so we're gonna hook uh, this extra harness up with the O2 sensor. Can I tow my four wheel drive element with my two wheel drive wagon? Probably. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna cover this. Another thing you gotta do when you do a B series EF swap, you have to take the dust ring off of the hub, the uh, rubber rings off of the axles, and the ABS rings off of the axles. Not always, but sometimes in this case we did. So the dust ring, which is this thing that sits on the inside of the hub. This is actually a ring that came off of the axle on the driver's side. We just cut it off just because it was faster. I forgot about that. Sorry, we didn't get that on video. We've just been having a nightmare with this swap. So the elusive secret has been found. Thank you to Devian CRX on HondaTech.com. It was from 2009, and that post waited a week and a half to show up on my feed. So basically, this is what happened. Okay, here we go. This was this is, was the symptoms here. No start. The engine turned over. Fuel was getting to the fuel rail. The ECU worked. The distributor was good. Go ahead. The uh, timing for the timing belt was dead on. 
The wiring was perfectly correct. Even that, oddly enough. But the car would not start. We had spark, uh, but the injectors wouldn't fire. And after turning it over, we got a code eight. TDC. TDC. Oddly enough, we finally found the solution. And we believe that it was in the uh, jumper harness. The jumper harness, because I guess it was cheap, or there's something up with uh, multi-point, uh, dual point jumper harnesses but if you get a code 8 and no other symptoms and you've double checked everything basically what it was is cylinder sensors and the crank angle sensor wires were were swapped so what we did is we just came to the distributor and then swapped both wires from the cylinder sensor and the crank angle sensor and it fired right up instantly um, it threw a code at first for O2 sensor and an injector. That's because we didn't have one of the injectors uh, plugged in. We plugged that in. Uh, then we had a code for O2 sensor. It, uh, we finally, we didn't have one plugged up, so we plugged that up. This is a non-chipped ECU, and now we have normal lights here. Turn these sweet lights on. Ooh, I like that. She runs perfect with no check engine lights. Got oil pressure and the alternator works. Hell yeah. So this mofo runs after a week of hell. Maybe I'll do like a sum up. We still, uh, tomorrow, we're obviously gonna go, we've still gotta bleed the coolant. Uh, we're gonna tighten up the wiring and we'll take it to an exhaust shop to have the exhaust fixed and that will be it. We're gonna take care of that tomorrow and that should be it and I should be on my way back home. Sorry for the video taking so long to get out. So that's pretty much it. Um, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> this was one frustrating uh, swap, but f I'm sure this video will help a lot of you out there uh, with dual point, going to multi-point and um, basically, when it comes to you cannot get it started and you don't know why, just start flipping the sensors at the distributor. I know that's kind of bad advice, but it's really the best advice I can give you. Because if you keep getting one code over and over and over again, you need to do something different to get at least another code so you can attack that problem. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, uh, keep up with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Uh, go buy a shirt, please, because it really helps support uh, the channel. Thank you so much to all the people out there that have been watching, liking videos, and uh, anybody who bought a shirt, thank you so much. As well as, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to Tyler, um, who was from Chicago, who helped me out in Orlando last night. He went above and beyond to help a stranger. He stopped when really nobody else would. So if you're out there and you're, you're watching this, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I had a great time at Ibach. Thanks so much to all the subscribers I met. It was really nice to meet all the subscribers out there. Uh, they were really awesome, had a great time. I was supposed to hang out a little longer in Orlando, but unfortunately I couldn't because of my own personal car situation. It's been a long drawn out week. Now I'm gonna go relax. Peace out. Here it is next day. We tighten up the wiring. Gotta put the battery in, start it up, bleed the coolant. Anyway, other than that, uh, it is an old car, so be very uh, mindful of fuel leaks. Make sure that the thermostat ground is on tight, as well as other grounds and all connections are secure. Uh, the reason we didn't like tuck anything is because Seth wants this to be a functional car. He uses it daily. This is not a show car. This is not anything crazy. He literally bought the B20 for reliability. Look behind us, see any smoke? No smoky. You feel some giddy up on this mug? Sweet, now I can drive to the movies again. Now you can drive to the movies? Well, the suspension is 
choice on this motherfucker. <laughs> Grinds, she's smooth. Feels smooth. Yeah. And it's gonna take some time to build trust with it. That's how it is with every swap. You're like, I don't know about this for like the first 50 to 100 miles. Vibration isn't really that bad. It's not too bad. It's really no worse than it was. The steering wheel seems straight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the swap is finished. It's time for me to head home. So far, it runs great. He's still got to run by the exhaust shop. Uh, things that you will need, I'll go over the list one more time. You have to use aftermarket mounts and make sure you pick the correct mounts if you're using a cable or hydraulic a transmission because they are different. If you have an automatic EF, the mounts are also different. The 90 to 93 uh, rear bracket for the engine mount on the engine and transmission is the correct one to use as well as the uh, engine post mount on the timing belt side uh, that's what the mount actually bolts to and bolts to the engine companies like innovative and hosport make aftermarket mounts also you need to modify the subframe you have to knock the uh, little brackets that stick out that originally hold the front mount you also have to remove the dust rings from the hubs and the little rubber uh, rings from the axles. So, so far the wiring was all correct. What we did, it was basically the jumper harness that had the issue and sometimes aftermarket distributors are not pinned correctly. So if you have a no start code eight situation, start looking at um, the cylinder sensor, crank angle sensor and uh, TDC sensor inside the distributor. Triple, triple, quadruple check all that wiring and make sure they're going to the correct pins on the ECU as well as the injector wires, which uh, go to A1, A3, A5, and A7, and the power wires go to A15. Uh, whether you're using a resistor box or not, all you have to do is pin that in. Uh, that wire from A15 powers the resistor box, or you get rid of the resistor box altogether, and it powers all four of the injectors, as well as the cylinder sensor wires that go to C1 and C2. The EF swaps are definitely a little bit more labor intensive and requires some special parts. We used a high compression B20 engine with a uh, 94 to 01 LS intake manifold, throttle body, air idle control valve, as well as distributor and injectors. We use a 90 to 93 Acura Integra transmission. Keep in mind, if you also use a uh, hydraulic transmission, you will have to bore out the holes on the rear bracket because the cable transmissions use 17 millimeter bolts on the rear bracket and the hydraulic transmissions use 19 millimeter bolts on the bracket.